Okay, in this example we're going to go ahead and look at Sapphire plugins running inside of Final Cut Pro. Uh, these same plugins also work inside of Motion and After Effects, Premiere, as well as Combustion. Um, first one I'm going to show you in this example is the Rack Defocus plugin. And what Rack Defocus will do is it will actually simulate a camera defocus uh, by giving you these, these lens blooms as you go ahead and turn up the defocus amount. Um, I want to play this clip back for you first just to give you an idea of, of course, how it was shot with a locked off camera with no uh, defocus tools going on. And what you can actually do here, again, is, is, is simulate a camera defocus. So as we turn that on, which I'll show you in a sec, we're actually going to be able to bloom these highlights here wherever the lights are on the uh, highway overpass as well as on the cars. Now I want to show you the difference between a rack defocus and just a regular Gaussian blur. So I want to go to my effect tab here, and I want to actually go to my uh, video filters and just throw a regular Gaussian blur on here. So this is your built-in blur inside of Final Cut. It's a nice blur, but you can see as you turn the radius high, everything gets smeared out, and you can't really tell any, or where any of the highlights are, where any of those, uh, where those shapes are. But instead, I'm going to turn this off. I'm actually going to delete it, and I'm going to add a Sapphire Rack Defocus. So to do that, I'll go back to my Effects tab, to my Video Filters, and take a Sapphire uh, Rack Defocus from the Blur and Sharpen family. And instantaneously when I apply this, you see the difference here. You see all these highlights are very clear, and you can actually make out all the individual elements of the lights. I'll put this back for you. Um, as it moves, you can see it's much more of, a, of an accurate camera defocus. Um, and just to mention here, I'm, this is Redline Unrendered. I'm just playing this back um, by frame previewing it, but it just shows you how fast these Sapphire plugins render as well. So I want to go in here and adjust some of the different controls for my rack defocus. Uh, the first thing I want to do is adjust the defocus width. And that's this parameter up in here. And as I go ahead and I take up my defocus width, you'll see the, uh, the amount of those circles are getting larger. It's, it's a little harder to see stuff, but you can still actually make out all these different shapes in here, just like you would with a real camera. Um, if you want to boost these, we have an option to boost the highlights. And this is a really useful option in that it actually tries to simulate that true blooming you get with a camera lens. So even with a really high defocus width here, as I turn up my boost highlights, you'll see it's actually going to add further clarity um, to those to those camera lenses or, or, or to the simulated camera lenses by uh, giving you these uh, these highlights here. Uh, that's one of the nice options you have. Some of the other cool things you have are all these lens controls. So I have this basic circle shape here, but if I want to go ahead and start adjusting this more, I can step into my uh, shape option here, and I can just start adjusting different lens shapes. So you can see here I have circle, three sides, four sides, five sides, and so on and so forth. I'm going to zoom back out excuse me, and then just show you some of the different looks here by choosing three sides, four sides, five sides, and so on and so forth. Um, in addition to the lens sides, you have also different controls to move the lenses. So I've got what's called the rotation option, and rotation is just a, a nice 360 uh, widget here, and as I drag this around, you'll see the uh, lenses are actually moving and animating. As I drag that around, you can, of course, keyframe any of this. Um, to play around with some more geometric shapes, you have the roundness option, which you can take to both a positive and a negative value. Uh, as I take it up to one, it's going to soften it out to be a circle no matter how many sides you have. Uh, but vice versa, as I take it down to a negative value, you're going to get more of these pronounced uh, sides to it, these pointy sides to it. Uh, so here I am looking at the, the camera lens inside of Rack Defocus. What I can also do is isolate the camera lens by itself and essentially look under the hood at what my lens shape is. And to do this, I have what's called the show shape option here, and it's just a checkbox. And I'll zoom into that, and I'll go ahead and zoom back out and click on my actual checkbox here, and voila, you're now looking under the hood. It's bypassed the actual result to show you what the type of camera lens you're playing with. Um, from here, as I mentioned before, there are the, the roundness options, the rotation options. You've also got bokeh, which is going to soften the outer edges um, with a positive value, and with a negative value, it's going to soften it from the inside out, sort of a type of ring type defocus. Uh, you have lens noise, so you can add bits of imperfection bits of dust, uh, if you're trying to simulate uh, those certain bits of hair and whatnot that gets on a camera lens, as well as different controls for the frequency of the noise uh, and how often it, it animates. Uh, I'm going to go back here and turn off the show shape checkbox again just to show you how I've got these uh, little bit of noise in here. And as I zoom in, you can see it a little bit more, the camera noise, or the lens noise rather. Um, and that's, uh, that's Rack Defocus. Again, obviously you can keyframe anything here. So if I want to set my first keyframe at, uh, at zero and make this appear to be shot in focus to out of focus with the camera, it's very easy. I'll just jump ahead a couple frames here and then turn up my defocus width. And as I go back to the beginning here and play this back, you go ahead and see that it's actually going to simulate uh, a camera lens here. 
So that's Recti Focus, and that gives you some options for what you can do with the uh, standard geometry options built into the, uh, to the shape editor. Now let's say you want to go one step further. Let's say you want to go ahead and use your own asymmetrical shape or a custom lens that you've developed. <laughs> well, it's, it's quite easy. We have another plugin for that, and that plugin is called Convolve. And what I'm going to do now is turn off my Rack Defocus plugin and instead turn on my Convolve plugin. And Convolve uh, has a myriad of different things it can do. Uh, the easiest and the most out of the box thing to do is just to use it as a Rack Defocus because there's not a whole lot of different controls you have to adjust. You simply apply it and then uh, input your, your lens here. So I'm going to go to my Convolve plugin here. It's in the Sapphire Blur family as well. I'm going to apply it. And by default, you can see it's not really doing much. It's sort of smearing out the image. You can't really see what's going on. But when I go over to my Convolve option here, you see there's this option for a kernel. And there's a little uh, box with a question mark in it. So what that tells me is I can drop in an image, in this case a, a shape, and use that as my Rack Defocus lens. So to do that, I'm going to go back into my bins here and uh, grab some footage. I've got uh, something in my Matt's family, I believe. This is a nice uh, well-known icon, the Apple logo, and this is something I couldn't really create within the, the shape editor of Rack Defocus. This is something that I either had to create on my own in, in, in another application or get off the web or whatnot, but I've got this and I've got it as a black and white image, which is, which is important, which is essential when you're simulating a, a camera lens with Convolve. So now that I have that in my, in my footage here, all I'm going to do is go back to Convolve. I'm just going to take that logo right here from my footage. I'm going to drag it and I'm going to drop it in this little well here, and you see the well indents. And now once I've done that, you can see things starting to come in. Um, you're not seeing it entirely that well because the kernel size is actually still quite large here. So what I want to do here is turn my kernel size down, and you'll start to see the uh, actual Apple logo come in a little bit more. And it's still a little hard to see, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost those highlights like I showed you before to give you further clarity. And there you can see it's actually coming in really nicely. So here I can actually show you the unaffected clip and as I turn up my kernel size very ever so slightly you'll see that's actually doing a rack defocus based on that Apple logo that I dropped in as the kernel and the same thing applies here if you want to go ahead and do a, a an animated defocus you can just go ahead and add keyframes so I'll set my kernel size here which is essentially the same as defocus width I'm gonna set that at zero and add a keyframe and then I'm gonna go ahead and jump out a few frames and then turn up the keyframe maybe somewhere on there 0.39 that looks good and I'm going to go ahead and, and play that back for you. Again, just playing uh, frame previewing here, not, not even rendering, seeing mm. how fast it plays back to go ahead and show you how it's actually using that logo now to do a defocus on all the highlights. So that's Rack Defocus and Convolve for you.